Hello everyone, welcome back to a new Pyro Math lesson. Today we'll be talking about a technique known as stars and bars. Stars and bars is also known by a bunch of other names, uh, balls and urns, balls and boxes, sticks and stones, etc. You can call it whatever. This topic is a mid-math council level topic, mid-AMC and low AIME style. And I'd like to note that the application of this technique is subjective to the problem and it can be applied in a wide range of difficulties. It's not necessarily just mid-math counts, and we'll see that as we do the problem for today. And the subject of this is combinatorics or counting and probability. So let's take a look at the general problem that this uh, formula is trying to solve. So we'll take k balls, and these are indistinguishable, meaning that they're completely identical and we can't count extra when we switch these balls around into different arrangements. We also have n boxes, which are distinguishable. So we can't switch around boxes and say we don't count them again. We need to count them again because let's just say they're numbered. Then we can tell the difference between them. And we're told how we are asked to find how many ways we can arrange these k balls into the n boxes. And we get a neat little formula for that. And this is the stars and bars formula. So given these k balls and n boxes, the number of ways to arrange them is n plus k minus 1, choose n minus 1. And the proof of this problem is not computationally intensive. It might be a little conceptually hard to understand, but we'll go through that right now. To solve this problem, we have to transform it into another problem where it gets its name stars and bars. To explain a little more, let's just um, write these balls out in a row. We'll say we have eight balls. For example, and we want to split them up into three boxes. Well, one way we can do this in this you know linear format is to put in two dividers, so we have three sections. So I'm just going to put in one here, and one here, for example. And here we have three boxes or sections, right? One here, one here, and one here. So essentially what we've done is transformed putting k balls into n boxes into writing these k balls in a row and then splitting up them up using these divider bars. And so if we consider these balls as stars, that's where we get the name stars and bars because stars and then the dividers are the bars. And so this is a way we can think about the problem and it'll come in handy when we're proving it. And let's get to the proof. This is a counting argument. It's not really an algebraic proof because it's not an equation. It's more of a formula. We only need one side of the um, the count. And so, yeah, let's let's get the picture again of our k balls. This time, I'm just going to have k balls here. And so we have k balls, and we want to arrange uh, them into n boxes. K balls and n boxes. And to do this, we have to put in n minus 1 dividers. Let's just say there's n minus 1 of these. Why do we need n minus 1 dividers? As we saw in the before example for uh, three boxes, we had two dividers. Basically, there's one here, one in between, and one at the end. And using the same logic, we'll have n minus 1 div uh, dividers here. And we claim that the number of ways to organize these k balls into n boxes is the same as the number of permutations of these n minus 1 dividers and these k balls. And why is that? Basically, to prove that these two situations are equal, we have to prove that every situation of the, the first problem, let's call this the first problem, relate or translates to a situation in the second problem, and then vice versa. Basically, if we have an arrangement of k balls and n boxes, as we saw before, we can visually interpret it into these um, stars and bars. In the backwards fashion, if we have a arrangement of stars and bars, that relates directly to a, to a case of the first problem. So for example, this arbitrary arrangement right here has no balls in here, 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 or here, but we have all k balls here. This translates to zero balls in all the first few boxes, and then all the balls in the last box. So as we can see, these two problems count the same exact thing, and we can utilize the second problem to have a more effective way to prove this. And so now, all we need to do is count the number of permutations in the second problem. 
In the second problem, we have n minus 1 plus k objects, right? We have k stars or balls and n minus 1 dividers, which are bars. And if you are familiar with the choose function, then you'll know that the number of ways to do this is n plus k minus 1, which is the total number of elements. Choose n minus 1, which is exactly our formula. It could also be written as uh, n plus k minus 1, choose k. And these two are equal because what this choose function is actually doing is taking the n minus 1 plus k positions of this arrangement and choosing you know, n minus 1 of the bars. So basically, out of the total number of positions, where can the bars be? That's what this one's computing. And then the second one's computing the same thing except with the balls. Where can the balls be in the uh, total number of positions? And if you write this out in an equation form, you'll get n plus k minus 1 factorial. Choose factorial. I'm just translating the first one, though you'll get the same equation. Um, n plus, or sorry. This will be k factorial. And this is another way to count it. I think this is used in many other competition problems where if you have n plus k minus 1 factorial elements, uh, n plus k minus 1 elements, you can just arrange them and then correct for overcounting using the denominator. But either way, this is the formula we get for stars and bars. And this is the short proof on how to get it. Again, it's not very computationally intensive, though uh, forming the relationship between the first and second problem here was the crux of this. Now let's look at the problem for today. We're gonna take a look at 2020 AMC 10B problem number 25. So it's a more difficult application of stars and bars, but we can get through it with just stars and bars. Uh, no other experience is required necessarily. So before I begin reading the problem, I recommend that you pause the video here, try out the problem on your own, and come back if you're stuck, or even if you got the answer, uh, try watching the solution. Okay, so the problem here, let d of n denote the number of ways of writing positive integer n as the product. n is equal to f1 times f2 dot 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 fk. Basically, we want to write n in terms of the product of its factors. Okay, where k is greater than or equal to 1. The fi integers are strictly greater than 1, so they cannot be greater, they cannot be 1 itself. And the order in which the factors are listed matters. So if we switch around f1 and f2, that gives us an extra count. So the number 6, for example, can be written as uh, 6, 2 times 3, and 3 times 2, which gives us d of 6 is equal to 3. We're asked to find what d of 96 is. Here's another opportunity to pause and once I read the problem, try to figure out what the balls are going to be, what the boxes are going to be, what the stars and bars are going to be. Because at first glance, this problem is not seemingly a stars and bars problem. But, but we can make it that so we can use our formula. Okay, so here, balls are going to be the factors of 96. Remember, n is 96. And this is equal to 2 to the power of 5 times 3. So what do I mean by factors? I mean the prime factors of 96. The 2, the 2, the, there's 5 2s, and there's 3. So these are going to be the balls. What are going to be the boxes? The F1, the F2, the Fi are going to be the boxes. OK, why is this the case? So let's draw this out visually. I'm just going to do four boxes without the loss of generality. And we have our balls. We have to distribute these um, balls into these boxes. And why does that give us an arrangement of n? So let's just take an example. This two goes here. This two goes here. That gives us this is four. This is a two. This is a four. This is a 3. And at the end, if we multiply all of this, we get 96. So all we're distributing is the prime factors of 96. And so here's, here's where the balls and boxes or the stars and bars technique can come into play. So let's use it. So let's take k, an arbitrary number of boxes, 
And we want to distribute the six uh, prime factors, the phi twos and the three, into these k boxes. Okay, so again, drawing this out. We notice one thing. In the balls at boxes or the stars at bars we discussed at the proof earlier, we had the balls be indistinguishable. And to a certain extent, that's true here. But there's one, you know, unconformity. We have all the twos here as indistinguishable. But this one three kind of ruins it. So we can't directly apply the formula. We have to figure out what happens to this three. Okay, so what, what, what can we do with the three? Well, one thing we can do is we can put it anywhere because it's really independent of whatever happens to the twos. So the number of ways to range the three is just k because it can be put in any of the k boxes. Okay, so now you might think, you know, we can apply stars and bars to the rest of the boxes. But what there, there's a slight problem from the problem. Fi are integers strictly greater than 1. And that tells us none of these boxes can be empty. Well, that's true because if any of these boxes are empty, that means then if any Fi is empty, that means that Fi is equal to 1 because it doesn't have any factors. So it must by default be 1. And we just said that Fi is strictly greater than 1. So we need something in each one of these boxes. And remember, we already have a 3 put in one of these boxes. So without the loss of generality, let's just say that 3 is put in this one. So the remaining k minus 1 boxes must have at least something in them, right? They can't, they can't be empty. So out of the remaining 5 twos, we need to take out k minus 1 of them. So instead, we're left with 5 minus k minus 1, which is equal to 6 minus k. So after we stick the k minus 1 twos into these boxes, we're left with 6 minus k, 6 minus k twos. And this also tells us one thing. Okay, 6 minus k cannot be negative because that that you can't have a negative number of balls. So this tells us that k is less than or equal to 6. You can have zero balls because uh, once all of the balls are put into the boxes, there can be no way to organize the rest of them. But you can't have k as greater than or equal to 6. So this tells us that k is less or greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 6 because uh, we were given that k is greater than or equal to 1. Something important to note for later. Okay, so now are we ready to apply stars and bars? Well, here, yes. We're left with 6 minus k balls. And we still have k boxes. What can we do here? We can simply apply the balls and boxes formula. The stars and bars formula gives us... So this, this right here is the n in the formula, and this is the k. Apologies for the confusing notation. k was used in the problem. But here, 6 minus k, or k. So it was n plus k minus 1. Uh, choose n minus 1. So n plus k minus 1, choose n minus 1. Just simplifying a little bit, we get 5 choose k minus 1. Okay, so for an arbitrary k, and remember we have this condition for k, the number of ways to arrange these factors is 5 choose k minus 1. But don't forget about this k over here. So in total, the number of ways to organize for arbitrary k is k times phi choose k minus 1, because we have multiplied this independent um, other count. And what can we do? Well, we have to sum k from uh, k is equal to 1 to 6. If you're not familiar with the sigma notation, all I'm doing is uh, technically casework. I'm just doing all the cases for k going through 1 to 6. And I can write that out in uh, explicit form too. 
So basically, if you have k as 1, which is 1 box, then we have 1 times 5 choose 1 minus 1, which is 0. And similarly, we can write out the rest of them. 4 choose 5 choose 3 plus 5 times 5 choose 4 plus 6 choose 6 times 5 choose 5. And these shouldn't be too difficult to compute by hand. We get the answer of 112. And we could do this to begin with with casework. It would have been a, a little more messier, but doing it for a generalized k would have given this or gave us this answer much simpler. And so we get the answer is 112. If we look back, that's option number A. So that's the solution to this uh, more advanced application of stars and bars. Thank you for attending this lecture, and I hope to see you all again.